Hey folks, this is Abel James, and thanks so much for joining us on the Fat Burning Man Show, where we talk about real food and real results. Can changing your thought patterns actually improve your ability to heal? Once you sift through the research, the answer is undeniably yes. Today we're here with Dr. Roy Vong Tama, a board-certified cancer specialist, experienced meditator, and man of many talents. He's the author of Healing Before You're Cured, a great book, I gotta say, and you may even recognize him as an actor from the TV show 24 and many more. Dr. Vong Tama has done more than, get this, 7,000 hours of silent meditation, and today he's gonna talk to us about how changing your thought patterns can actually rewire your immune system and your brain. Now, before we get there, Here's the review of the week. This one is a doozy from Amanda. She says, awesome book and philosophy. Abel James, the fat burning man, has dared to say what people have been thinking for years. We are what we eat. I watched Abel and Kurt on ABC, and it was Kurt's journey to a healthy lifestyle that truly inspired me to check out the wild diet for myself. Like Kurt, I'm in my late 40s, numerous injuries that prevent extensive exercise, and a lover of food and beverage. I needed to find a diet that wouldn't deprive me of the things I loved to eat and cook, needed to find an exercise program that I could reasonably commit to without further injury, and then a plan that I could stick to, a healthy lifestyle change, not just a quick fix. Abel had it all. I started the 30-day meal plan and was able to eat delicious cheeseburgers with cookies for dessert. I began walking with my husband on all the local trails, short distances at first, and now up to three miles in under an hour. And instead of just grabbing whatever I could find at the local supermarket, I started buying organic meats from local distributors and vegetables from the farmer's market. I have never felt better. Gone is my lethargy and late-in-the-day gloom. I look forward to finding new trails, exploring new recipes, and tasting natural and delicious foods. I feel like I have my life back. Oh yeah, I also lost 8 pounds during that first 30 days. I know it's not an enormous amount, but I know it's a healthy, steady loss that will stay off. And I'm still losing while eating bacon, drinking whole milk, and enjoying real butter. Bringing natural organic foods back into our diet has made a larger change than I ever expected. Thank you, Abel, for speaking up and sharing your knowledge with the rest of us. I love your simple explanations and lack of fancy descriptions. Read The Wild Diet, check out Abel James online, and become part of the fat-burning tribe today. You won't be sorry, it will change your life. Oh, Amanda, this is one of my favorite reviews I've gotten in a, in a long time. Thank you so much. And if you're out there and you're getting results or you have a question, don't be shy. Go to fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, reply to my email, abel at fatburningman.com, with your question, and I answer as many as I can. And who knows, it might even wind up on this show, or you might even wind up on this show. So as always, abel at fatburningman.com, that's A-B-E-L, and of course, who doesn't love healing their bodies and dropping weight with cheeseburgers and cookies? If you're into that and you have a little bit of fat to lose or you want to get back to your high school weight or you're looking to get in the best shape of your life, then we can definitely help you, especially this year. Now, when you join our online coaching community, the Fat Burning Tribe, you'll get wild meal plans every month. You'll never have to worry about what you're cooking for dinner again. You'll get workouts, exclusive giveaways, live Q&A sessions, with me and much, much more. So if you're ready to start eating delicious food and shedding stubborn fat, check out the Fat Burning Tribe for a limited time discount over at fatburningtribe.com. And if you're already a member of the tribe, thank you so much for your support. We have a lot of fun announcements coming up for you. And if you've already been a member, then why don't you join back up? There are a lot of familiar faces and friends in there. And of course, if you're subscribed to our own company that, that we're basically sponsoring our show with so we can keep it indie and cool for you guys, then go to wildsuperfoods.com, sign up for the subscription, and you'll get access to the Fat Burning Tribe coaching community completely for free on us as part of your subscription. So that's a really new exciting thing that we're doing. Don't forget to get all these goodies over at fatburningman.com, fatburningtribe.com, and wildsuperfoods.com.
We'll hook you right up. All right, on to the show with Dr. Roy Vonktama. You're about to learn games you can play to relax yourself and decrease your stress load, the link between your thoughts and your body's ability to fight disease, how to turn the laws of motion into your secret weapon, how meditation helps rewire the immune system, and tons, tons more. Let's go hang out with Dr. Roy. All right, folks, Dr. Roy Vongtama is a board-certified cancer specialist with degrees in biological basis of behavior from the University of Pennsylvania, a medical doctorate from the University of Buffalo, and postgraduate training at UCLA. His additional work includes authorship in 14 peer-reviewed scientific papers, hundreds of hours of study in nutrition, positive psychology, emotional wellness, and meditation techniques. Roy is also an actor in film and TV, including 24 and The Bucket List. Welcome to the show, Doc. Hey, how's it going, man? <laughs> really good. We're, so I was just saying before we recorded this interview, you might have set one of the records for dog ears on your book. Wow. I, uh, I marked it up. So, so much of it is because of your background as a physician and someone who heals people, but also you live this double life. And, <laughs> uh, and, and I love how you work in the book. You work in your story about uh, how that wasn't always uh, a successful journey. It wasn't always, you weren't always encouraged. In fact, you got a lot of people saying maybe you should keep your day job. So I'd, I'd love to hear you just kind of explain that story because you don't often meet physicians slash actors. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I, I appreciate you uh, loving the book. First of all, thank you so much. And um, like my story. Yeah. So I grew up. Uh, a family of two doctors. My parents are both doctors. Um, and uh, my dad told me, you know, Asian parents are like, oh, you can do anything you want after you finish medical school. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know, I was a good son. I was like, oh, OK. But I always had this, you know, desire to do uh, creative stuff as well, you know. And um, to top to bring into the mix of that dynamic was um, the fact that my family is Buddhist and I went to Catholic school my whole life, you know? So I got this one kind of thinking at home, which was all about like reincarnation and like, you know, karma. And then in Catholic school, it's like, you got one life, you got one shot, right. you got to go through Jesus or you're in big trouble. You know what I mean? So it was like a big, like, oh, I was like, whoa. And um, so um, when I was in high school, I actually um, petitioned to get out of religion class. And, uh, I met with the priests and they're like, why do you want to get out of religion class? No one gets out of religion class. You know, it's every day, it's an hour a day. And, and I was like, well, honestly, I have a lot of questions, you know? And they're like, oh, that's great. I'm like, yeah, but you guys don't give me any answers. You keep telling me everything's a mystery. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, and they're like, they laughed and they're like, well, what's a question you have? And I was like, well, I want to know. You, Jesus left when he was 13 and then he came back when he was 30 and he was the son of man. You know, he was this, this everything. How that, where'd he go? And they're like, there's a mystery. I'm like, no, it's not a mystery. You just don't know. <laughs> and they're like, they laughed and they're like, okay, thanks for the meeting. And I was like, all right. So I went out and my friends were like, dude, how'd the meeting go? Did you get a class? I'm like, I don't think so. I didn't get a class. Two days later, they called me back in. They were like, okay. We thought about what you said, and we're Jesuits, and this is why we get in trouble with the church. We're going to give you, you can get out of religion class for the rest of high school, but every two weeks, you have to write a report to tell us the answers to the questions that you have, and so your first report is you have to tell us where Jesus went, and so I was like, what? I walked out, and I was like, whoa, I'm out of class, you know, <laughs> every day. You know, I'm 16, you know, it's like, that, sure. was, that was two years. And, um, but the other side was like, well, I have to do this report. And so that kind of really started me going because I, I, you know, I went to the library, couldn't find any information on that, you know, went to like four bookstores, finally found this book um, called Jesus in India. And um, I read it and I was like, I read it in the store. I read it really fast. I was a really good reader and I was 16. I didn't want to pay for it. So <laughs> I was like... I was like, oh, I think this is where he was. And so I, I submitted, I went back to the priest. I was like, wham, here he was. He was in, he was in India. And the, the, the father was like, oh, that's awesome. That's great. Okay, your next report is on, you know, uh, uh, on, on Buddhism. 
And I was like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just told you something. Like this is, you should look into this, you know, look into this. And he's like, oh, okay, we will, we will. And I was like, I can't believe it. You're not, you're not listening to me, you know? So I got really um, upset about that. Mm -hmm. And that was my first taste of kind of like how, and I wouldn't call it indoctrination, but I would say like people, um, you know, we have to be open. You know what I mean? We have to be open to other points of view uh, or else we're stuck. It doesn't matter who we are. If your message isn't alive, it, you get stuck, you know? And um, so I went from there to uh, medical school and um, I started experimenting with like creative stuff, you know, on the side secretly. And I went to uh, an acting class in my first year of residency and I, I was horrible. But um, the coach was like, what do you do during the day? And I was like, no, I'm a doctor. He goes, well, maybe you should do that. No. And I was like, oh, is that what we're doing? Oh, we're going to do that, you know? Yeah. And I'm a big athlete, so I was super competitive. So <laughs> I came back every single day, you know? Yeah. I was like, I was like, give me more. I'm going to prove this to you, you know? And then I fell in love with it to the point where um, when I was applying for residency for cancer, for radiation oncology, I um, – you know, I had interviews at MD Anderson, really big cancer center, you know, probably the best in the United States next to Sloan Kettering in New York. Um, and um, I had UCLA right before that. So I went into the chairman and he's like, you know, I have friends at MD Anderson. They told me that you're going there, you know, in a few days. Why do you want to come to UCLA? We're not as good as MD Anderson. And I said, well, to be honest, do you want to know the truth? And he's like, yeah. I was like, I want to be an actor. And he goes, what? He goes, I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> Paris wouldn't let me. He goes, if you come here, I will protect your time. You can take vacations when you need, when you have jobs, you know, as long as your residents cover you and you do all your work and you do your research, I think that's awesome. You know, I'll well, totally, so cool. as long as I'm the chairman, you can take, and I was like, well, uh, if you give me a contract today, I'll sign it. I won't even go on the interview with Andy Anderson. And he's like, are you serious? I was like, yeah. So later that day, he gave me a contract. I signed it that day. I was hooked into UCLA. For the next four, four years, I was able to do my cancer training and at night do this creative work. Um, so, of course, all the way along the way, I had a lot of people, I won't say they are UCLA, that were like, what are you doing? You know, like, seriously, you're not going to be a good doctor by, by, you know, exploring your creative side. You need to focus on the science, you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, what I found was that acting actually was really the way that um, got me to be a good doctor because I would go in the room and I could listen because mm -hmm. you know, acting is reacting. And the patients would be like, what medical school did you go to? I'm like, oh, I don't I want to go to medical school, <laughs> you know. Um, and also I found that, you know, I would have a lot of emotional stuff, you know, growing up in a community that was, you know, uh, basically all, all white. I got made fun of a lot. I had a lot of anger, uh, but I would suppress it because it wasn't okay. Being Asian, we don't do anger. The anger is not done. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like, mm, you know, it's like everything is like, um, are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. Are you sad? Yeah, I'm sad. You know, <laughs> sure. it's kind of the same thing. And so when I got playing these characters, I couldn't play people who were angry. I couldn't do it. Oh. Huh. I would actually cry when I was supposed to be angry. I would cry. Yeah. I couldn't access it. And one coach was like, um, you don't need an acting class. You need therapy. Yeah. You know? And I was like, what, what's that? You know, she's mm -hmm. like, someone who helps you with your emotions. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not, no, I'm not going to do, you know, I'm not going to do that. But then after, you know, what motivated me was that I was like, trying to get acting jobs and I couldn't get them because a lot of them involved going, you know, having anger. Sure. <laughs> so I had to go do this work. I had to, I was like, okay, well I'll go do therapy. And I found out that like, whoa, I have a lot of stuff that I need to work out a lot of trauma, you know, from the way I grew up. Yeah. And that's basically how I came to this book really, you know, it's like the spiritual stuff, the quest for knowledge, the acting training, and of course the medical training. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the whole enchilada <laughs> and you don't usually get that. One thing that I love that you bring up in, in your book is you kind of describe the white coats, the, the, 
I don't want to say normal doctors, but like the, the doctors we're unfortunately accustomed to. Can you, can you explain the difference between that and, and kind of what you recommend in your book? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, the white, the white, I call them white coats is because I also don't even wear a white coat when I'm in the hospital. Yeah. I don't wear one. And yeah. you know, there's a lot of research showing why you shouldn't do that because people get really triggered by seeing the coat and their blood pressure goes up and they have this perspective of who you are. Um, and I think, you know, Western medicine's kind of like they, you know, a lot of doctors want you to feel that they know what they're talking about and you don't, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it might be subconscious. It might be part of their ego structure or whatever it is, but I don't want that. You know, if you come to see me, I want you to feel that you are in, you're in control. You know, my mentor, Dr. Juilliard at UCLA used to say, we can't treat you without you. Yeah. I love you know? that. And so I, uh. I really took that to heart and I will walk in, you know, I'm like, I'm like, Hey, how are you doing? You know? And I also don't like to take the perspective of the person is sick. You know, I'm not going to walk in. I'm not going to be like, Hey, how are you? Um, yeah, this is really, really hard. Isn't it? You know, I won't come in like that. If you're there, I'll connect with you on that space, but I'll walk in. Hey, how's it going? You know, yeah. I come in I'm like, I want to, I want to talk to your, your, the part of you that's, 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 that's living, that's, that's loving, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and it, and I'm sure if there's doctors listening to all that's foo foo. I'm like, well, guess what? The people who do this, they have less lawsuits. They have less malpractice claims. Mm -hmm. The people who are able to connect to patients. So it's not about, it's not just a foo foo thing. You know, this is like a hardcore practical thing. If people trust you and they feel they have your best interests at heart, you're going to, um, you're going to do better for them and you're going to, have to do better for yourself um, in that way. And they can look that research up, you know, if there's anybody looking, it's just plain. And, and what, you know, what we're really talking about is em empathy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about connecting in the spaces where people are, but also seeing them in their, you know, there's empathy and then there's compassion, right? Um, empathy is the feeling of the space that um, I know how you feel right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I know how you feel. Compassion is the space of I know how you feel and I want to help you. Yeah, that's that space. And so if you have that component in your ability to communicate, you know, you're, whether you're a personal trainer, you're a you know, you're a musician, you're an actor, you're a doctor, that is the key. And actually, if you look in the research on therapy, on like cognitive behavioral therapy and psychodynamic therapy. The only thing that's consistent, if you look in the research of a good therapist, is if they're empathetic. It doesn't wow. matter what approach they are. Yeah. The, the person will make their gains based on the fact that you have empathy. And, and if you think about what that really is, it's really like the person themselves is discovering. Right? And they just need yeah. someone there to discover with them. And that's kind of like my underlying thing is to help people uncover the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about themselves. Yeah. And and if you look at other cultures, especially ancient ones, then usually they would think or say that most illness starts in, in the brain or the spirit, in the mind or the spirit. And it kind of trickles down from there. It's not this one problem that you walk in with and then they slap this label on you, right? It's not it's not this. So can you talk about Because you definitely deconstruct that in the book, too. And it was just a pleasure to read because having these labels slapped onto things, I mean, it, it does seem to help, kind of, but it doesn't solve the problem. Not at all. I mean, like, I mean, there is, okay, the one I have in the book is called ITP, yeah, uh, 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 idiopathic thrombocytic, thri thrombo I can't even say it, idiopathic <laughs> thrombocytopedic purpura. And, you know, I had a patient, like, oh, I have ITP, I feel so much better. And I'm like, okay, do you know what that means? And they're like, no, I mean, but they told me I have it. Now I know, you know what it is. And so there's that aspect where there's a relief. Oh, someone knows what it is. Yeah. But all that word means, idiopathic means we don't know why it's caused. <laughs> right. you know, Thrombocytopenic means that you have low platelets. Purpura means you have purple spots. So we don't know why you have low platelets and purple spots. That's the disease <laughs> we told you to have, right? Yeah. And, and, I'm like, and I'm like, that doesn't help, you no. know what I mean? And, and it's just a label, and now you're walking around like, oh, why are you sad? Well, I have ITP, you know? It's really hard. And I don't mean to be mean anybody who has ITP on their thing, but my whole point is like, okay, they've described it, but do they know what to do about it? Yeah. And 
this is something I say to, you know, people come yesterday. Um, I had a patient, she came in and she had really aggressive breast cancer, like really aggressive. She had, she's 50 something and 54 and she had, um, you know, a six centimeter tumor in her left breast, like really big yeah. lymph nodes, everything. So she had to get preoperative chemo. She had surgery and she's coming to us for the radiation. Um, but even in that case, it was still not, not a, not a lock not a lockstep that she was going to, you know, do well. In fact, it's unlikely that she will do on Western medicine alone well. So I said to her, are you open to doing other things? You know, mm -hmm. and she's like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, um, to be honest with you, you know, your cancer is really aggressive. And I never, ever, ever talk about numbers because that just impregnates the person with these, yeah. this, this mental structure, you know? And I, I'm like, so I said, listen, you know, um, has anybody talked to you about nutrition? And they're like, well, they told me it doesn't matter. I'm like, okay, well, that's wrong. You know, <laughs> that's not, yeah. so I'll talk to you. If you open to that, let's talk about that, you know? And then, so we did some talk about that and she's like, well, what else can I do? I was like, okay, do you know what meditation is? And she's like, no. And I was like, would you like to learn? And I had a nurse in with me at the time in this room. And she's like, well, um, yeah, I'd like to learn. Maybe I'll take a course. I'm like, well, I'll show you right now. She's like, what? I'm like, right now. And I'm like, I told the nurse, I'm like, Leo, sit down, let's go. We're going to meditate. Close, lock the door. Yeah. And so, boom, she got nutrition, she got meditation. And then um, I was talking to her about, um, you know, and then she's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. You know, like I can do all this myself. I'm like, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that, and we did, we did some, we did even more stuff, you know, we did some more stuff um, um, based on some yoga practices I know and she was really into all this stuff. And I was like, this is it. This is what I want to create or want to help people create in themselves. Yeah. To be and so she walked out, she hugged me, you know, and I'm like, well, you're not supposed to hug me, but that's okay. You know, I love hugs. So that's cool. And she was like, wow, I feel like I have some things. And when I walked to the door, I'm like, I'm like, listen, okay, what did we go through? She's like, we did nutrition. We did meditation. We did this technique to help heal my nerves. And uh, you give me some stretches and we'll come back and get the planning session for the radiation. I'm like, yes, that's it. You know, it was like East and West. It's both. Yeah. The answer isn't the $7 trillion of research. The answer isn't the 7,000 years of experience. It's both. Yeah. It's used both, you know, go to the buffet, go to both sides. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love that. And it's, it's, I don't know why it's so rare. Maybe you can explain why it's so rare. But there is this this thing like I'm just imagining that white coat coming up to me because that's what happens saying diet doesn't matter. And then me getting really sick because of it and taking a bunch of drugs, you know, like that's not healing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you another story. So I decided, wow, this is cool stuff. And I'm really excited about it. Let me go talk to my doctor friends at the hospitals that I work at. Yeah. Right. And I was like, so I scheduled with a CME lady and She's like, okay, you're scheduled. And then, you know, there's all these doctors coming. It was like 75 doctors. They're really excited. You know, so I, I went up and I, I started talking. And I <laughs> imagine this. So these old, old bunch of doctors, most of them over 50, most of them over 60, been practicing this certain way. And I was like, well, there's research on the mind, you know, and how if you do affirmations, and I used the wrong word, I used affirmations. I should have just said positive statements. Right. <laughs> you know, but I used. I use affirmations and I was like, I was like, this research on the board here is um, from, you know, it shows that, you know, thinking affects your gene structure and your immune system. And so let's do some positive thought, you know, let's do some now. And I, I had him repeat. I said, okay, everybody repeat. I am whole and I am healed. <laughs> you know? um, and they were like, I am whole and I am healed. <laughs> I'm like, all right, again, again, with a little more, you know, gusto. Yeah. I am whole and I am healed. And I'm like, I, and one guy immediately gets to this. This is a religion talk. <laughs> you know, this is not a science talk. This is a religion talk. Yeah. And I was like, what? So I was like, a religion talk. Uh, can you tell me what study that is on the board there? What journal it's from? And he's like, cancer. I'm like, that's a pretty big journal. All right. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, is that a religion journal? And he was like, no. I'm like, well, then why is what I'm saying religion? You know? Mm -hmm. And then another doctor, actually my friend goes, well, how do you know that's a true study? How do you know they didn't fake the study? Yeah. And I was like, 
I, so you, what do you, what? And I, and he was like, yeah, I mean, they, they could have faked the whole thing. And I was like, this is like, I walked in a conspiracy room. You know right. what I mean? It's like, it's like, we're talking about flat earth now. I don't, and I was like, well, uh, um, I'm, I'm confused, you know? And I was like, well, you can say that every study in that, that journal is fake then. Yeah. All the ones that you, and, and really what we're talking about is confirmation bias. It's mm -hmm. like, they're only open to what they already know. And to prove the point is I had 75 um, instructors in medical school. I had 275 classes on different subjects. How many, you tell me how many were on nutrition? I don't, I don't want to guess. It's too depressing. Take a guess. Take a guess. Three. Zero. Come on. <laughs> Zero. Zero, man. Zero. Yeah. So uh, that's why they say it doesn't matter because they were never trained in it. Right. You know, and it has nothing to do with, um, it has nothing to do from my perspective being a doctor, you know, an MD. It's like, it's not that um, they won't do it. They just weren't in doc. They weren't, they weren't taught an integrated approach, you know what I mean? And um, so that that's just one aspect, you know, of it though, is like, um, is that, um, and also, you know, once you start to um, see that what you're doing gives you respect and gives you this, you know, sense of like, I am somebody, it becomes really hard for you to break out of that, that, that mold. Right. It's like an identity thing at that point. And you, you're so yeah. deep into it. There's no, there's no way out. There's no alternative at that point. Right? No, no. And you know, that's why when people are alive, you know, they lie and they get in these situations and you're like, you're like, well, why, why isn't he just telling the truth? He can't. Yeah. He's been, you know, and that's something I talk with people about. I'm like, you have to know that life is about, you know, I talk about the laws of motion. I don't know if I, um, if you've got that point, but, but the one that I really like is, uh, momentum, mm -hmm. you know, every, an object in motion stays in motion. Object at rest stays at rest. So whether you're building a good habit or a bad habit, that, that momentum will create something in your brain and energy that it's going forward. And this isn't a theory. This is a law. It's the law of momentum. So if you're creating this momentum that's great, it's going to be really good for you. But if you're creating this momentum that's not great, it's going to be really hard to stop that snowball. You know? Yeah. And... I like thinking about it that way too, because it's kind of like a habit change and, and I like to bring everything down to like, what can we literally do today to make things better? And that's, that's where things like meditation come in. The very simple thing, going for a quick walk outside. You mentioned most of these things in your book. It's very, you know, I think holistic and it really looks at the whole person, the whole spirit and, and everything that goes on. Like right before this interview, uh, I'm doing six today. It's a busy day and I don't like being in front of these lights and stuff, but I just went outside in the sun for a couple of minutes between interviews. Feels so much better. You know, before my first one, I meditated for a bit. I think I'll probably do that between a break and in, in the afternoon. So these, this is what I'm literally doing today. And that's one of the things I just love about uh, your work is because it's not the most complicated stuff is better, right? It's about, it doesn't matter if it's complicated or simple. Let's do what works, you know? Yes. And, you know, that's something I've been talking uh, with some guys on um, in, in the clinic about, like, you know, it's cool if you're inspired, like, you know, Abel, they're on the podcast, you're listening. That's cool. You know what I mean? Great to be inspired. But how do we really get you to change? And, you know, and that as, you know, somebody in this field, um, I've thought about a lot because if I can't get you to walk out the door and be different, you know what I mean? Then I've failed. You yeah. know, so it, it is what you said. It's like, how do we access this stuff right now? And that's really the key. So, for example, the, the main thing is, is no matter what you get my book, you read it. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. You pick one thing. Mm -hmm. You pick one thing and you, you know, in martial arts to say, put an iron around it. You put iron around it. It means you vow that you will change this one thing and make it really small. You know, um, um, so, and I say commit for seven days. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. You got to do seven days. And if you do seven days, you can do another seven days, but do seven days. And get that momentum the one that, going. Yeah. Get that momentum going. Get that. And the, the thing about it is, is that I like, for example, one that I give people a lot and I found it has really good compliance. Actually, now I'm going doctor words. Um, compliance is, is gratitude. 
Mm -hmm. So I tell people, look, you know, um, and especially if I see they have a negative mindset, you know, I just want you at the end of the day, I'm going to give you, and a lot of times I give them a little journal. I have these 50 cent journals. I'm like, here's a journal. Nice. Uh, will you raise your hand and commit right now to write five things in that you're grateful for? And they're like, well, I don't know if I have time. And I'll be like, okay, I just said it'll take you one minute. <laughs> yeah. So you're telling me you don't have one minute for yourself. That's what you just said. And then, and they're like, and a lot of times they'll, my next line, they will say my next line, which is, wow, explains why I'm sick. Hmm. I'm like, yeah, it does. Because you just told me you went on five minutes. You don't have one minute to go through this practice. So then they're like, okay, well, I'll do it. And I'm like, okay, great. <clears throat> so go home. I want you to think of five things, anything. In fact, let's do the first journal entry right now. And it can be anything. You know, I call it five stars a day. So put five stars, write five things. Like I got to talk to Abel for an hour about, about my work. Great. I got to wake up early, uh, earlier than I did. And I saw that the sun was out, you know, and I got to, I, and then number three, I went outside and I live in an area that has, has clean air in LA. That's like a miracle, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, that's three. Number four, I got to, you know, practice, um, you know, uh, my meditation before the, the, the thing. And number five, my light switch worked so and the power was on so I could do this interview. You know, I haven't we're not even at at 9:45 and I I, already, I can go on and on and on. Yeah. And it's like you know, that's a practice I, I like to give people right away. So if you're listening and you're like I, I I you know, I don't have time for any of this stuff, meditation whatever, start with that. Start with gratitude and the research on gratitude is really big. Um, you know, it improves your immune system and decreases anxiety, decreases depression. Um, it improves the functioning of your brain. Um, gratitude is actually experienced in the prefrontal cortex in the front of the brain. And they found that if you practice gratitude, it starts to enhance that area more and more. And so that when you're in situations that are neutral, you will actually choose to feel gratitude rather than other things. And if you're only reaction up to that point has been to victimize yourself based on like, oh, I can't believe this happened to me. You know, you might, you might have a new choice and your brain, because of this habit you created, this momentum you created of gratitude, you might be able to think, well, that's pretty cool that there's traffic right now because then I can listen to the rest of this podcast, right. you know, and then, oh, that's really great. You know, um, you know, oh, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll have time to listen to this song. You know what I mean? Like the, the ubiquitous one is traffic. You know, instead of instead of saying, you know, um, I can't believe this happened to me. This always happens to me when I want to watch the basketball game. I, I you know, uh, there's always traffic. And, you know, now they're going to be mad at me. And it's this um, in the gratitude research actually found that um, it's actually not the positive thought that that it is, is actually the fact that you're not thinking negative things. Hmm. Um, so they actually look in the research and they found that if you're um, a neutral thinker or a positive thinker, it's the same. Um, it's because negative thought. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. And if you look at the research on positive versus negative thought, um, if you read the book, though, you're going to know the answer to this question already. But yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll just skip to it. I don't want to ask you, but, uh, you know, they found that people who are, um, negative thinkers, um, which, you know, can be defined in many ways, but they have a positive negative thought ratio that actually is positive 2.5 to one. Yeah. Positive to negative. And why is that a negative thinker? Well, because negative thought is more impactful than positive thought. Like losing money. It hurts more than making it money. hurts more. It's visceral, right? And so to become a positive thinker, you have to be over 4.5 to 1, 5 to 1. But optimally, um, the, they found that the people who are 10 to 1 are, are the most healthy in their minds. They have a better immune system, less depression, better uh, um, socio socioeconomic status, uh, less disease rate. It's like huge and so the science now is coming back to the, you know, back to what they've known for thousands of years everywhere else. Yeah. That mind is the originator of everything, you know. 
And it's crazy how entrenched the people who don't believe that are into their own ideology, right? Like, like even the concept that there might be a little bit more than the material reality is like infuriating to them and like flips them out like flat earthers almost. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you know what I like to bring up is in with, with medical people is placebo effect. Yes. You know? totally. And they're like, they're like, Oh yeah, that's placebo effect. I'm like, what's the placebo effect on the blood pressure? Like that's 25 to 35%. I'm like, Oh, so <laughs> if they think that they're taking something, <laughs> right. So you're saying that it's not a big deal that they're getting 25 to 35% just by believing that they're being helped. Right. You just told me without any training that these people are 25 to 30% more likely to have a lower blood pressure because they believe <laughs> that they're going to be better. And you yeah. think that's nothing. Yeah, right. that's nothing. It's a fake study. It's, but, but think about that. That's without any training. Now, yeah. what did you add in training? What did you add in intentional thought? What did you add in that? But what, what do you see, you know, um, what have you add in meditation and you look at the studies that are coming out now about positive thought and actually this is what I give. Like if you're a negative thinker, I'm like, you want a prescription for me? That's what you want, right? You want a prescription? And they're like, yeah, yeah, I want it. And the, that's that attitude, right? That mm -hmm. I need something from you. I'm like, okay, if, if I get to the end and I can't convince them that ownership is the key, you know, then yeah. I'll say, okay, give me a prescription. Here's your prescription three times a day. I want you to think this positive thought. And they're like, that's not a drug. I'm like, oh, it is a drug. It's absolutely a drug. I want you to, and this is another thing that they, these people listening can do, you, you can do right now. Mm -hmm. I have this, I learned this technique. It's called tense and relax. It's real simple. And this is the entry point to everything because disease is really a lack, you know, dis-ease. It's a lack of ease. It's in the word, mm -hmm. you know. And if you think about that, you have to create ease in order to create healing. That's your gateway. And so I know I've, I've, I looked you up, man. I've been stalking you, Abel. So I know, <laughs> I know you're in a great relationship and everything. What have you gotten a fight and you told your, your girl, hey, honey, relax. What's going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're going to say yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. We're going to. Oh, yeah. You're smart. So I'm going to do the opposite of that. Right, I'm gonna tell you to tense. So you inhale, tense the body, exhale. So that tension, your body will react to tension by relaxation. Hmm. So you tense and relax. You can do that now as you're listening. Tense and relax. And you're automatically in a state of, of calmness, of ease. And if you wanna meditate, if you want to say something positive to yourself, if you want to access that, that's the key. It doesn't matter if you say positive things to yourself if you're tense. It won't impact. Yeah. You know? Just rolls so, right off. Yeah. It does. So you have to access it correctly. So that's what I'm talking about training. If you train yourself to actually be relaxed by forcing your body to go to tension, you automatically go to relaxation. So if you have a big event, you know, if you have a big speech you got to give, if you have a concert you need to give, if you just before you go on stage, you go, <sighs> you know, you see basketball players all the time. If you watch them at the foul line, they're, mm -hmm. they're doing it, yep. you know, they do it naturally. And I'm sure they've been trained, you know, and um, so I'm taking that. So now we have two things. You can do a gratitude journal. You can do tense and relax. You can do a positive thought. Um you know, it depends what faith you are. You know, if you're Christian, you can, you can use a prayer. If you're, you know, if you're a Hindu, you can use a mantra. If you're, you know, anything, it doesn't, you know, you can access it any way, anything that speaks to you. And instead of rolling through your mind with these, I, you know, I call it the chain gang, mm -hmm. you know, it's this chain of negative thoughts that you're, you're running through your head, you know, um, instead of doing that, give yourself a choice. I'm not telling you to think positively. I'm saying you have a choice. And by adding another choice point in, you went from like 100% negative to possibly 50% that you could choose something positive. Yeah. And we have more control than we realize. It's just we need to start using it now. You can't, you can't do it later. You can't be like, I'm going to get better or think differently later. 
Like you have to start now because it's it's literally changing your brain, like you said, when you have these thoughts. And <laughs> I mean, the 25 to 40 percent placebo effect has been I, how long have people known about this and slapped a label on it? Like pretty much forever. Right. They, they knew about it before it had that label, I would think. Yeah, it's it's really um, it's really it's really powerful. And, you know. In um, like I follow a yogic path of meditation, mm-hmm. and they talk about a term they call Maya. Maya means the not a girl. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking <laughs> Maya. A Maya is, means delusion. Maya means delusion. You know, in Thai they actually have the same word Maya. It means mm-hmm. it means uh, it means a, a play. In Thai, it means like a, a oh, cosmic play. Yeah. And if you think about the the web that is spun, you know, around you by social media by the news, by the advertising that's coming through, telling you that you need to take this drug, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that in order to feel healthy. Well, they just want you to buy something. Yeah. You know, and everything I talk about in the book is free. Mm -hmm. It's free. The only thing you have to do is own it and you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, there's there's something I, that I want to share with people though. You know, they get people get really excited about change once they hear and they get inspired. But if you look at the research on change, um, so there's this really interesting um, study with men who are smokers that had a heart attack, admitted to the hospital, very serious, could almost could could have died. Yeah, they're given three recommendations: uh, to stop smoking, to exercise, and to eat better. All 100% of everybody in the study agreed to change that. Three, these all three things. Mm-hmm. At six months, how many were doing one of the three? What do you Am think? Am I supposed to answer? I remember yeah, 5% you're... from one of them. <laughs> okay. If you do one of the three, it, the chance of you doing one of the three was 30% actually. It's pretty high. Okay. But just about, one. That wasn't all three. No, how about all three? Was that the 5%? It's 3%. 3%. Jeez. So, okay. So that's like, ah, oh, but, okay, this is, this is how you turn things like lemonade to lemons, right? This is the thing. Yeah. Is that 30% did one. So you have an access point here. And I'm like, I have a way to, to help you because pick one thing. Yeah. Eat one carrot a day. <laughs> yeah. Just start like, look, if I'm in the room with a patient and, and, and I, you know, you want to hear some stuff like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, let's start. You, you should eat a salad. And they're like, salad. If they're on salad, we're not getting to meditation. You know what I mean? We're starting with salad. So I'm like, great. They're like, well, what do I have to take away? I'm like, you don't have to take anything away. You don't have to take anything away. I want you to add a salad. Can you commit to having a salad for seven days? They're like, what kind of salad? I'm like, I don't care. (laughs) If it's green, yeah, that counts. They're like, "What about a carrot?" I'm like, "Okay, carrot counts." Literally, that was somebody asked me what you just said. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> like, surprised. Like, does a carrot count? Because I don't like spinach. I'm like, that's fine. I never said spinach. I said salad. But people have, you know, and and so that's the thing. The research shows that thirty percent of people will maintain up at six months one change in activity. That's under the threat of death, though. Right? Yeah. That's like. Yeah. Um, so I would think that would be lower if it were people who are healthy that are listening. But if you have anything going on, that's it. That's a You know, that's affecting you, you know, illness wise or disease wise. I almost don't even like to say those words. But if you have something going on that your body, that's a that's, you know, of, of that pattern, um, you put a new pattern in. You don't have mm-hmm. to try to change the one. put the new one in. And once it builds momentum, it will change for you the old patterns that's actually native american teaching they call them you know they call patterns so then you you just you just change this pattern put put a new put a new cycle in. put a new pattern in yeah well i was going to ask you because you had patterns running that you described through throughout several stories in the book and uh, and the one i don't want to spoil it but can you tell the story of of ray in the book (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah okay so there's a guy there's a guy i know ray i know him really well Ray, um, so he was at um, a summer camp that he did, and um, for years, every he was at this camp, and he'd always get hurt playing sports, right? And um, for years, this would always happen. He'd play a sport, and he would get hurt every time. 
And um, at this particular camp, he was trying to compete to get up this telephone pole to get across this wire at one of these wilderness camps. He's trying to compete with this other guy that was actually an Italian uh, Olympic, uh, uh, you know, cross country guy. Oh and so Ray um, was climbing up the telephone pole and he looked down to see this other guy behind him. And he's, there was a nail in the telephone pole uh, and he smashed his face into the nail and he had this puncture wound in his face. And so he went to the, the medical doctor and they're like, well, you know, um, you know, uh, there's this nail in your face, but we can't do anything. We're in the mountain. Can we, you know, have you had tennis shots? I'm like, yeah, I've, I've had them. I'm like, okay, we'll skip that. We'll super glue your face. And so I went, well, Ray went right from there into a, uh, water polo game. And then he hurt his shoulder trying to throw the water, water polo, uh, ball around and his shoulder come out, subluxed his shoulder. And so they sent him to the yoga healer guy. And the yoga healer guy said to him, why do you like getting hurt? And Ray was like, what are you talking about? I don't like getting hurt. I just get hurt. You know, that's what happens when I play sports. I get hurt. And he goes, oh, that's interesting. Hmm. And he started working on Ray's shoulder to try to get it back to go in place. And it got in place. And he goes, and Ray asked him, is like, what do you mean? Like, why do I like to get hurt? He's like, well, you keep doing it to yourself, don't you? And Ray thought about it. And Ray was like, um, you know, that's interesting. The only time my mother ever hugged me or physically touched me was when I got hurt. So Ray either wins or he gets hurt. That's what happens. Those are the only two outcomes that are acceptable in the emotional body of Ray. And obviously I already ruined it because I said my eye a bunch <laughs> yeah. of time. Ray was me. You know, I, I had this this kind of like a need to feel this physical love, you know? And I didn't even know that pattern was in me. Yeah. You know? And that's that's the thing about it is, you know, um we don't have to try to change things. We just bring awareness to them and then mm -hmm. they shift. And I started to become a lot more aware of how I was playing sports. Like if I was losing, I would start running into people like literally like yeah. I love to play basketball, scored like 20 points a game and all these teams. And but if we started losing, man, I remember this one game. I we were losing. We were down by nine. And this guy was guarding me too close. So I just shoved him into the bleach. I literally took him and threw him into the bleachers and the rest of the team tackled me. <laughs> and I was like, ah, and I was like, my friends were like, holy crap, what is, this is a medical school, mind you. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, and actually what was interesting was I hit uh, three three-pointers right after that in a row. Huh. And, and so, and in my mind, I was reading, I was like, oh, I needed that, that adrenaline boost to get me going. Yeah. You know, but I could have been punched. I could have been hurt. They could have broke my back when they tackled me. Anything could have happened. And... And that was the only acceptable thing to me. You know what I mean? It was it was to win or to get hurt. And that's what I talk a lot about about in the emotional house. You know, it's like this stuff, this what what I would call trauma from childhood is very, very impactful in people's lives. And I'm case in point on that, you know? How do you find out when it's running that pattern? Good question. Good question. Well, um, there's a, you know, there's something that we do. We have a free email course we're doing with people. Um, uh, maybe we'll give them the link later, but basically, um, I, I have a quiz. I have people, people take, you know, and in the emotional house quiz, there's only four questions. And the questions are, how are your relationships now? How are your intimate relationships? Are they harmonious? Are they, are they, you know, peaceful? Is that one now? Have you ever had any trauma in the past? any kind of abuse in the past. And then number four, have you had any, um, uh, loss, death or loss in, in your, in, in, in the past? Um, and, um, Oh, sorry. That's actually question three. Question four is, are you prone to mushrooming? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so that's the term I looked it up. No one has ever used that term for this. <laughs> when I said mushrooming before they're like, 
that means something different to me. You know? <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Mushrooming to me is when you have an inappropriate emotional reaction to an event, mm-hmm. you know, like road rage. Someone cuts you off. You're like, what the heck? I can't believe. Who are you to do that to me? You know, I'm like, okay, wait, number one, you don't know who they are. Yeah. You know, they didn't really do much to you because nothing happened. And it's just, LA. <laughs> and it's LA. Right. You should expect it. So if you're a 10 out of 10 on anger because of a one out of a 10 event, that's called mushrooming. Yeah. So if you, if you, if you have intimate, if your intimate relationships are not good, if you had trauma in the past, if you're prone to mushrooming and if you had abuse in the past, if you answer yes to any of those questions, I'll almost tell you that you have a pattern running that has been undealt with. Mm-hmm. So to kind of expound on that, like if you're listening right now, like, look, you know, you can take the email quiz and you can go through, find out which house you're, you, you, you actually fit in emotional, physical, mental, or spiritual. But the key is that, okay, so most people who are into health, they're usually into nutrition or exercise, right? Mm-hmm. But if you look at uh, change, it's actually a dose response curve, meaning dose response means that it, it starts low, it starts low, swings up and goes flat at the top. So it starts low, swings up steeply and goes flat at the top. If you're doing really well on nutrition, you're already 90%, 95% there. You don't need to change your diet anymore because you're going to take the same effort to go from 90 to 100% as you are to go from 20 Right. To 80. Right. And it's the exact same energy, but the change is much bigger. So by finding out what area you are actually at a 20% in, where you have one or two questions um, uh, negative in, in an area, you know, you want to focus on those areas first because you can get the most benefit, mm-hmm. you know. And if you're already really healthy and you're exercising, you know, and if you're, you know, the physical health questions are like, you know, the data points are, you know, four hours of exercise a week. That's the point. Are you doing that? Are you, are you eating 50% of your diet green? Are you, you know, are you, you know, the other question, you know, there's all these simple, simpler questions. If you're, if you're, if you're scoring positive on those, you don't need to be in that house. Mm-hmm. You don't need to be working in the physical house. Now, if you're on the emotional house and you only have, you're like, you're, you've been divorced six times, you know, you grew up in a broken household. You know what I mean? Yeah. I talk a lot about patients with that and they'll say like, well, but I'm making a, I'm making a million dollars a year, mm-hmm. Dr. V. How could I have emotional problems? I'm like, well, can you tell me the name of your children? And they're like, um, yeah, uh, one is a, a Jim and one is, um, you know, literally I had a doctor come in. Wow. He had to think about the name of his patients. I mean, his kids. Wow. And I was like, I can't believe I'm hearing this, but um, it was a simple question. I just was asked. I was trying to ask another question mm-hmm. about his kids and about love, but he couldn't. He, it took him a few. It should be, it should be like Jim Jane, Jim Jane, and you can't distinguish between them. That's what mm-hmm. love is. It's a parent, right? Mm-hmm. Jim Jane, Jim Jane, Carl, and you add in the dog sometimes. Jim Jim and Charles Spot, you know. <laughs> yeah. You ever do that? You're like, oh, I, I, and and then you know that's what usually love is. But if you can't even remember the name of somebody in your life, that's, that's a big thing. Yeah. And, um, if you look at the research on trauma, um, there's a big study called ACEs, um, adverse childhood experience study. And they found that if you have a yes to, uh, any of the 10 questions that they, they ask these people, this is a 15,000 person study coming out of Kaiser um, Kaiser Permanente, Mm -hmm. they found that if you have any yes in these questions, you have a higher likelihood of depression, cancer. If you had four questions positive, you had double the risk of cancer. Wow. With trauma. So basically the trauma that they're talking about, people are saying, Oh, oh, I got to take this test. Yeah. If you put aces in, you'll get the quiz right away. But, um, physical, physical abuse, emotional abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse, sexual, uh, emotional neglect, uh, physical neglect, um, uh, incarcerated person in the house, um, uh, you know, witnessing domestic violence. Mm-hmm. If you had any of these things in your your thing, you you got a, you got a mark on this test. If you had four of those positive, you double the risk of cancer That's in the amazing. future. This is an independent risk factor, meaning 
it, people are like, well, that, I mean, it may, made them smoke, you know, and then the smoking caused the cancer. No, right? No. Yes, cancer, I mean, cancer is caused by smoking, but they found that trauma is, is an independent risk factor. So, so if you don't become aware of it and start working on it, you're not only, what was interesting is you had seven, you had a six, I think it was a 3,000 times likelihood of suicide. Wow. Thousand. Wow. It might be misquoted. It might be six, 600%. No, I think it's 3,000 actually. It was 3,000% more likelihood of committing suicide. And this is independent Jeez. of any other factors. So it's like, if you look at the study, it was everything. It was increased heart disease, increased cancer, increased stroke, decreased, uh, increased depression, increased suicide, increased risk of being abused later on in a relationship, mm. increased, decreased, uh, uh, you know, uh, socioeconomic status, decreased income, shorter life expectancy, everything was affected. So, um, you know, people poo poo kind of like getting therapy or, or doing work in the emotional house. But man, if you look at this study, you can't ignore it. Yeah. You know? Well, people probably poo poo it because it does take work. It takes a lot of courage to admit that you're broken or hurt or imperfect in some way, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, and I think that's, that's really true. Um, you know, if you're listening and you're like, well, uh, you know, I have, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather just, you know, start a new diet. You know, I'm going to add, right. I'm going I'm to add, uh, I'm going to add kettlebells to my routine. That's my, my new thing this week, seven days of kettlebells, you know, <laughs> you got to really, okay, fine. That's great too. Okay. But you're not, you're not hitting the house that you have the most problems in, mm -hmm. you know, um, now it might be your mental house too. You know, you may be a really negative thinker. We already talked about that earlier. You know, if you go through and you find that it's a mental house, then then it's your choice, though. You know, yeah. I, I did this with um, some employees at the hospital I was in, and one lady scored really poorly in the emotional house, and she scored kind of moderately in the mental house. And she's like, I want to change my mental. I want to get my mental from two to three. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, okay, you know, that's that's fine, you know. Because you just got to go and I'm like, so you're committing to changing this one habit you have in the mental house for seven days. And she's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay, well, write it down then. Write it in this little book. I gave him a little journal. I'm like, yeah. write in this book, write the commit, write the book, write the thing. And you're going to do this for seven days. And uh, she's like, she's like, okay, okay, I'll write it down. And once she wrote it down, you know, it's put out in the physical world, it's put on paper. You know, they found the research that if you write down the thing that you're trying to change, you're 50% more likely to do it. It's, it's magic. It really works. I've been doing that for a long time. Really? What do you, what do you, what do you do? It, it's some combination of, um, just letting whatever comes out, come, come out, just free journaling and gratitude. I did for a long time, physically writing it out until it was enough of a habit to do it mentally at the beginning of my meditation. Or, or even just when I wake up, sometimes it's like spilled into the rest of the day, right? But it's the writing things down. It's like I realized, I think in junior high, or maybe a teacher told me that if you write it down, you don't have to remember it anymore. Because not because it's written down and you can go back to it because your brain actually registers it in a different way. And, and I find that to be very, very true. I rarely go back to what I wrote down. But once it's down there, it's, it's kind of in. And you, you know, you make a really good point, actually, that I was thinking about before. Um, um, writing it down, though, not typing it down. Yes. Oh, yeah. So it's there's a lot of physically research writing. Yes. So there's a kinesthetic, and this is, you know, everybody's like, oh, we're getting the foo foo again. No, there's actual research showing that if you write versus typing, your memory retention, your ability to integrate the knowledge is mm -hmm. double. Wow. So actually in a lot of a lot of like I think it was Harvard Medical School or Princeton, they outlawed laptops in the actual learning environment. Really? When list. Yeah, wow. I, I can't remember which which I think it was Princeton or Harvard, but the research on the kinesthetic memory, um, writing versus typing, I came out of Princeton. Um I think University of Colorado too, actually. I think it was both of those. Yeah. But um um that is true. So it's the actual act of writing, physically using your hand, something about that registers in the brain and allows you to integrate more solidly. So, yeah, 
So that's some good homework for anyone listening or watching right now. And I can't believe it, but I, I could talk to you all day, but we're almost out of time. So before we go, can you tell folks uh, where they can find your work and a little bit more about your new book? Okay, yeah. Um, the book is called Healing Before You're Cured, an evidence-based guide to taking control of your body and mind. There is a, it's on Amazon right now. Um, it's doing really well. We started, um, we're number one in the uh, free download period on nonfiction nice. for a while. Um, and you can find that in print, ebook, and audiobook, which I actually narrate because oh, cool. my, uh, my background in acting. Nice. So you'll be able to hear me talking if you want to do that. Um, if you want to get on the, a free email list, you can go to www.royvmd. Dot com V is in Victor RoyVMD.com. I'll put you right on the email list, or you can text heal heal like in healing before you cure to heal the word heal to three four five three four five. If you put three four five three four five into the number line, and then you'll put heal into the message. It'll give you a prompt. You'll see my name, and you put your email in there, and you can get on the free email list. It'll get you to the quiz that'll actually help you take the take use the book actually. Um, so. Those are, and you can follow me on Instagram as well, Roy Vong Tama, M D R O Y V O N G T A M A M D. That's kind of hard to remember. So <laughs> I'll say it third, but uh, I'm on there, you know. So, um, and we're starting a new YouTube channel, um, Roy Vong Tama M D as well. So um, if you're looking at the set right here, it's, it's we're, we're oh, tuning sweet. it up now. <laughs> we're tuning it up. We're tuning it up. You can get the view here. There you uh, go. Yeah, nice. Getting, getting right to do. Um, but um, and we got some real plants right here. So, uh, yeah, man, I really, really appreciate you uh, having me on. Absolutely. Yeah, this this has been really fun. We got to talk about a lot of things that I haven't really covered, uh, at least not recently. So, uh, Dr. V, thank you so much for coming on, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. This episode is brought to you by listeners like you and Future Greens. You may know that I'm not a big fan of most supplements. It's hard to know if you're getting what you paid for. And even worse, many supplements, juices, powders, and greens we've tried taste terrible. For example, have you ever noticed that most powdered vegetable mixes taste like fish tank? Don't even mention fish oil supplements. Once you've had fish burps, it's hard to trust that brand again. So that's why Allison and I have spent the last three plus years creating wild superfoods. And it's our goal to give you the very best nutrition the world has to offer. Now you can get the concentrated nutrition of 15 organic fruits and vegetables plus six other superfoods in one extremely convenient ready-to-go package. We call it Future Greens. And if you're looking to improve your health, performance, and well-being by doubling your intake of fruits and veggies without the sugar and carbs, you're going to love it. With Future Greens... You can whip up your daily green drink in less than 30 seconds, no matter where you are. The certified organic stevia gives it a subtle sweetness and it tastes great in water or juice, and we think it even makes our green smoothies taste a whole lot better. It's made with certified organic, non-GMO fruits and vegetables to aid in detoxification, balance your body's pH, and give you a boost of clean energy without sugar, caffeine, or the dreaded crash. No junk or artificial sweeteners, and just one gram of sugar per serving. With the tasty wild berry flavor, you and your kids won't even realize you're eating broccoli and 20-plus powerhouse fruits, veggies, and adaptogens. So if you want to try our brand new creation from Wild Superfoods called Future Greens, we have even better news for you. As a listener of Fat Burning Man, and it's proof that you are because you're listening right now, you can actually get a 20% discount to try Future Greens yourself. Just visit fatburningman.com forward slash greens to get 20% off when you select subscribe and save. Once again, just visit fatburningman.com slash greens to check out Future Greens and get your special listener deal. We'll see you there. Well, hey there, listener. This is Abel one more time, and I just want to say thank you for listening to this episode of the Fat Burning Man Show. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button wherever you might be listening to or watching this show right now. And if you have a second, please leave me a quick review for the Fat Burning Man Show. I read every single one of them, and every time you leave a review, it gives us a little boost in the rankings, and that helps other people find this show. 
And if you can think of someone else who might enjoy and benefit from this free show, please take a second to share it with a friend or a family member. And if they're like, what is this fat burning man thing? That's a really silly name. You could be like, you're right, but here's the deal. We've recorded over 250 episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show with thought leaders in health from all over the world. And so far, we've won four awards, hitting number one in health in more than eight countries internationally. We have more than 30 million downloads already, but we're just getting started. I can't believe any of this, by the way, and couldn't do any of this without you. So thanks once again. But here's some more good news. You can download and listen to every single episode of the Fat Burning Man Show for free with zero outside advertisements, no outside sponsors, and no corporate overlords. All you have to do is type in fatburningman.com. We'll give you a, a second here just to type it in. And you'll get all the show notes, transcripts, and video and audio versions for all the past episodes of the Fat Burning Man Show for free. Better yet, enter your email at fatburningman.com, sign up for my newsletter, and I'll even send you a quick start guide so you can take your health in your own hands right now, along with a few of our ridiculously tasty recipes as a special thanks for signing up. Once again, just go to fatburningman.com right now, enter your best email to get your free goodies with a bonus surprise straight to your inbox. This is Abel James signing off. Thank you so much for listening once again and have a great week.